And we have uh, Jia Hao Yao from uh, uh, UC Berkeley. Uh, he's gonna talk about policy gradient-based quantum approximate optimization algorithm. Yep. Thanks, Bing, for the introduction. So my name is Jia Hao, a PhD student from UC Berkeley. Today we are going to talk about policy gradient-based quantum approximation optimization algorithm. And the key motivation behind our paper is that current quantum techniques um, encounter three big challenges. The quantum state is not observable, getting the derivatives can be expensive, and measurement can be sensitive to various sorts of noise. So we introduce PGQA or A. Um, optimization algorithm for variational quantum circuits that is both um, noise robust and gradient free. And you can find the paper through this link. And this is a joint work with Marin Broker and my advisor, Ling Ling from UC Berkeley. First, we are going to talk about the background of QAOA. So the QAOA has received lots of interest recently, and it can be viewed as the variational answers for quantum control. You are given the initial quantum state and the target quantum state. The goal is getting the um, quantum control of the um, QAOA angles, alpha and the betas, and to, yeah. So the onset is, is an alternating sequence of the unitaries uh, given by the H0 and H1 and the QAOA angles alpha and the betas. The fidelity is computed as the overlap between the quantum targets and the evolved quantum state. Our goal is finding a quantum control that is alpha and betas to make this fidelity larger. We formulate this problem into the MDP and we use policy gradient from using Fosman learning to solve this problem. And we introduce 4P learning parameter. That is basically the parameters for the Gaussian policies of our policy gradient. The action space are the um, QAOA angles, alpha and beta, and our action are selected through the parameterized policy, high theta, and our reward is the fidelity. So it is bounded between zero and one. Let's talk about the um, schematic of this um, PGQAOA. So we start with the uh, parameter of our policy, then we get our policy. We sample the QAOA angles from our current policy. We aggregate them to perform quantum evolution to get the evolved quantum state. Then we compute the reward through uh, we compute the fidelity as a reward. Then we aggregate the samples and the rewards to perform policy gradient to update the uh, weights. So this is the algorithm. So we do sample, um, sample a batch of samples, then compute fidelity, then compute the policy gradient. And uh, then we do this group again. So here are the numericals. So first we are talking about a simple uh, single qubit case. And first of all, it's noiseless case. So in the noiseless case, our reward is just the fidelity. So you can see as the training going on, at the very beginning, the sample is quite noise because it's from the random Gaussian um, policy. But with the, uh, with the training going on, it's, it's more concentrated on the unit fidelity of some, some QAOA angles. The second is the classical noise uh, settings. In this setting, we add a Gaussian noise to our fidelity. Mm, the agent is accessed only the noise the fidelity. And here we plot the exact fidelity only for reference purpose. And you can see also with the training going on, um, the agent is going to find, the, mm, find a good policy to improve the fidelity. The last one um, is want to mimic the quantum measurement error and noise uh, in the quantum computer. So we, our reward is, so with the probability of the fidelity, we get one and otherwise we get zero. So the reward is only zero and one. So you can see at the very beginning, there a bunch of zero happens, but so when the training is going on and um, the fidelity is became larger, so you are, go you are high likely getting more ones. So at the end of the episode, so uh, at the end of the training, so you, you, all the reward is concentrated on one. 
So, um, beyond the single qubit, we also do the experiment on many qubits, uh, many body qubit cases. So here is the icing chain with a prerequisite boundary condition. And our initial um, and target quantum state are chosen to be the ground state of hx equal to minus two and two. And our Hamiltonian we use is h0 and h1. They correspond to hx equal to minus four and four. We compare our algorithms with uh, various other black box uh, optimization. And uh, for the noise free case and the Gaussian noise case with different levels and the quantum um, error case. So you can find uh, when there's no noise, um, every algorithm looks pretty good. But um, when there's a noise and all the noise level is getting larger, uh, the PGQL is still remain the high performance. We also push forward to larger uh, number of qubits. You can see that n here is getting larger, but we keep the p fixed. p is a parameter in QAOA. So the fidelity is supposed to go in down, but uh, PGQAOA is remain the highest. We also uh, want to see how these um, algorithms put into more realistic experiment settings. So we build a cost model for the communication between classical and the quantum computer and to estimate the running time on the quantum computer. So, and so we are interested in how quickly a given optimization can reach to the optimal ground state, uh, optimal energies within a target precision. And you can see um, and here we introduce the three different models and you can find the details in this paper. And the main idea is the, post, the PG algorithm still remain the best among different instances of examples. On top of that, we, um, we also consider adding the noise, adding the gauge rotation error to the quantum circuit and also think these problems within a fixed world clock time. And here, the PG algorithm again shows the resilient to different noise. So to conclude, uh, we introduce PG QAOA algorithm, and we find the policy a probability-based optimization method from reason for, uh, reinforcement learning is well suited for such tasks. Uh, especially with uh, presence of the error. And our PGQA OA performance can sometimes comparable to more involved gradient-based algorithms and the commonly used black uh, optimization. And uh, our future direction, uh, we are going to implement and the testing PGQA OA on near-term devices, such as um, those provided by IBM. And we also, another direction, we're also thinking about making the policy more um, aggressive and go whether, to see whether we can go beyond the framework of QAOA. And um, also, I would like to thank for the mentors of this project, uh, Marie Brokhoff and my advisor, Ling Ling, and thank you all for the time and attention. All right, thank you. Uh, Jia Hao, I think you still have a few good minutes, uh, and I see you still have four, last four slices. Um, you do you have more to talk about or should we move, move directly to Q&A? Um, okay, so yeah. So here um, I also do some, so here are actual slides. So this example is, so yeah, this example is, so we can see our policy gradient and uh, other optimization. So they work pretty well in the noise-free cases, but when we add the noise, like the Gaussian noise or the quantum noise, the PG QAOA wins later, but other optimization, like the trust region, uh, constraint optimization do not give you the unit fidelity in this case. And we also consider the multivariate Gaussian policy because the referees ask us and uh, so we, we, uh, we have compared with uh, three different uh, cases. One is diagonal Gaussian, another is a lower triangle. Um, so we parameterize the lower triangle matrix L um, for, this, uh, for this factorization. 
And uh, we also parameterize the matrix A in this AA transport um, cases. And we can, we also um, visualize the like lower triangle matrix and uh, also the full matrix. And I can, we can see very clear for the lower triangle cases, I think most of the weight are concentrated on the diagonal. I think that's why we focus on the diagonal cases. And uh, also for the training, I think for the diagonal case, the main message here for the diagonal case is it is more robust to chain, but for other um, lower triangle and the full matrix concepts, I think that they, um, they are not quite, so the onset is more expressive, but uh, I think it, they are more hard to train well. Thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, what's the maximal number of uh, control variables? Um, and it's in the parentheses, angles in QA OA. Uh, in your numerical experiments, do you think the results will get worse when there are more controls, say hundreds? Yeah, this is an interesting question. And thanks for the question. And right now, the maximum number is 16. I think uh, in our experiment, we haven't uh, done like hundreds of QAOA angles. And uh, one is for larger angles, it is um, needs more time to train. I think um, if like uh, we make the training more stable, it is able to, it should be able to train for hundreds of QAOA angles because our parameter here is only 4P. So it should be able to do that. 